just wish DC would just blow up and be done. But Bendis is one of the is the writer who was responsible by making Iceman gay. He made a straight character who's been straight since 1960 gay. And I love how he did it. Jean Grey just messed with his mind by saying, Bobby, you're gay. And he believed her. And <laughs> that's how he did it. That's how Bendis did it. And I just mocked Bendis ever since. Like, ever since I see the name Bendis, I just hear someone dying. Like, when I see his name on a book, I think, shit. Like, he's the one who did Wonder Twins. Nobody fucking asked for them. I'm sure no Superman, Super Friends fans are asking for, we need a Wonder Twins comic right now. Nobody asked for it. I mean, nobody asked for those creepy looking twins. And somehow with his writing, it involves... This is Bendis, mind you. I think Bendis has a kinky sex life. It involves them discussing gay sex, bestiality, and how people fall in love with animals. I I don't know what the fuck is up with his life. <laughs> who, are, who are they again? The Wonder Twins are those creepy fucking twins who Wonder Twin powers activate form of a whale, a bucket. And that's how they are. I don't know how anybody was like, you know what, these characters are great. Let's incorporate them into the DC Universe. I know somewhere Batman's like, oh, you fucking retards. <laughs> Like, if I was Batman, <clears throat> and all of a sudden I'm in the Justice League, this is hypothetical because I wouldn't be, if I was Batman, I wouldn't be in the Justice League. I'd be like, I'm working for Catwoman, so you people go fuck yourselves. If I was Batman, and I am Batman, and all of a sudden Superman's like, you know what, we're going to bring the Wonder Twins in. And Wonder Woman's like, I agree, we need to do it. If I was Batman, I'd be like, Alfred, pack my shit, we're getting the fuck out of this place. So, so, <laughs> so, that's how I would be if I was Batman. Of all of a sudden, it's got to the point where if Teen Titans Go, which is a brilliant cartoon, makes a joke about the Wonder Twins saying how shitty of characters they are, what does that tell you? If a cartoon show that everybody ridicules and mocks I love you too. And they turn around and say, like, you know what? The Wonder Twins suck. You can't argue with a bad cartoon. Because <laughs> those characters suck. I mean, those are awful characters. I mean, their whole powers is one turns into, I forget, an animal. And one turns into, like, a bucket. Or a toilet. Or water. Or whatever it turns into. Those characters suck. So. So. I, I'd be honest. I, I would love to write my version of Batman. Who's just like. Fuck this shit. <laughs> so. <laughs> just That's kind of how it would be if I was Batman. I'd just be like this angry cranky Batman. Who's just be like. You know I'm out of here. <laughs> just. So. Tom King, a lot of people have been asking me. I didn't get to buy his book recently, but I I heard things about his, you know, you know, the whole Catwoman coming back, and the you know the story shows how much Catwoman loves Batman. And I, by the way, I did see the cover of this book. 78 looks really fucking good. I'm buying that cover. Because you have Batman, you have Catwoman together on the cover. Clay Man did the art cover. I'm buying that cover. I like it. No, wait, Tony Daniel did it. Sorry, my bad. Clay Man did the other cover. But I love both covers. These are... Really beautiful covers. So, 
I I'm happy. Um, by the way, I do love the uh, the artwork inside where in '78 where Catwoman's in the green dress and Batman, you know, the bandages and all that. <clears throat> I love that. That is a great cover. And I notice that Bruce Wayne sort of has the Tom Selleck look of Magnum P.I. I dig it. <laughs> I, I really like it. I think it's really cool. Um, I'm still pissed about Alfred's death, though. Yeah. Um, I don't know what it is. I know someone's like, do you think there's a chance that he's still in the dream machine? Or it's like going to be like a, you know, I'd be honest. I don't know. But if it turns out to be like this whole story, is all of a sudden the ending of him on his deathbed telling the story of his life, I'll be pissed. Because <laughs> it, it would be such a stupid cop-out of it. Like, I'd rather have the whole my idea of it, like Batman Inc., where you have the entire Bat family and are on a mission, like, fighting crime across the earth and all that. Like, I'd rather have that. Like, that'd be a great story. You see Bruce and Selena be parents, raise kids, and fight crime. It'd be great. Yeah. Did you hear about the Joker? I heard about the Joker reviews. Like, people did an eight-minute standing ovation praising how great the film is. There's a lot of, like, rumors lately of, like, Phoenix, Joker, and Pattinson's Batman cross, cross paths. And I love this one, you know, fake news cover. Robert Pattinson explains why being... Batman is humiliating. He was joking about it. Like, I watched the video and I read the article. And I really watched the video because when you read the article, you get a different interpretation of it. When you hear someone else talk about it in their own words, it's totally different. He kind of has, like, this, you know, confidence of being Batman, which is a great thing. Because most actors, I feel like when Ben Affleck got the role of Batman, he wasn't really confident about himself being Batman. I did see the interview. I I really I really think he is confident about what he's gonna do. Which is a great sign of a film. When the actor himself has confidence of what his role in the film's gonna be. And you kind of saw that with Clooney. Clooney didn't have confidence. He was just arrogant, schmuck. When you see Christian Bale or Val Kilmer or Keaton or Adam West, you know, talk so positively and you know how happy and they are with it, with the script or with their performance or something, it's a great thing. I'm not saying that Ben Affleck didn't have confidence. I mean, he's a great actor. Like I love the town and. You know, and I love the one film he was in, he did recently, um, Gone Girl. I thought he was great in that film. Because it's a great film, but it scared the shit out of me. That it was like at the end, and she, the wife, spoiler alert, the wife did the whole thing on, purposely, on purpose to get back at her husband. That scared the shit out of me. Like, I was just like, fuck, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> But it was just, is it, is it, <laughs> but it was just funny though, because I, I think what, <clears throat> what Pattinson's going to do with Batman is, he's going to do something that, <laughs> I think he's going to do something that, that's sort of going to remind me of Christian Bale's performance. Because he kind of, he kind of reminds me of Christian Bale. Because when you see an actor who, like, tells a director, you know, I want to work with you, and I will stop whatever I'm doing just to work with you, that's a good actor. That's someone you go, like, I can rely on this guy. 
This guy's going to do great things. He's what I call a utility player. And when you, it's a baseball terminology where a utility player is someone that you could put anywhere in the field. You could put him in outfield. You could put him in infield. You can make him pitch. I mean, I seen a utility player, Stephen Biscotti, pitch. <laughs> and that was when the Cardinals had a really bad year. <clears throat> I mean, they won the World Series and they just went into a bad slump and never got back. But they did. Uh, they won the 2011 World Series. So, Pattinson kind of reminds me of a utility player. You could put him in any role or any place. And you get the best out of him. And Pattinson becoming Batman, I think, is a great thing. I didn't really... I, I kind of joked about it because it's like... I seen the Lego movie and Batman was like in a sparkly suit. <laughs> It just made me go like, did, did, did that movie predict something? <laughs> but when I seen him in other films, I want to see him in that new film, Lighthouse one. I want to see him in that one. I want to see that film because, you know, you had William Defoe, who is always gets the best out of somebody. And Pattinson looked really good in it. He had a good mustache, but yeah, you know, mine, mine, my mustache is better. But <laughs> I, I think, I think he's going to do a great job with Batman. I mean, you have Matt Reeves who kind of put his foot down about some parts of the film, and I think he's going to do great. I seen him in, I seen Pattinson in one film. I forget what... It was a film with um, the one actress. I don't really like her. It's Julianne Moore. He was in a film with Julianne Moore, and I really didn't like it. I just thought it was a really bad film. Yours is amazing. Thank you. I seen... I forget what film Pattinson was in. It was... I think it was Good Time. That's what it was. He was really great in it. He plays a bank robber who is, who's on the run with his disabled brother. I thought he was great in it. Remember me, yeah. <clears throat> Twilight, remember me. <laughs> See the movie uh, Good Time. That he's great in that film. I just, he really plays such a very, in good time he plays like a really dark, complicated character. And you watch him, you're like, this guy could do something. He could play a really dark, complicated character. And, you know, he, The Lighthouse, I, I want to see that film. I, I don't know why, it's just something about that film. I seen the trailer of it and I thought, this is a good film. <laughs> I haven't even seen it. It looks good. It's about two... It's about two lighthouse keepers... As they face with lon- faced with loneliness, friendship, and their worst fears. Like, it just... It looks like a really good film, I think. That's... I know he's going to be in one film that will be on Netflix. The King... It, yeah, it looks like a good film, The King and all. Yeah, he was in Harry Potter. <laughs> he was uh, Cedric Diggory. He was in the. Uh, <clears throat> he was in the Goblin of Fire. Then he appeared in The Order of the Phoenix, which was funny though. Um, he was in The Order of the Phoenix. He made a cameo. It was kind of funny, though. It was like a year before Twilight, and there was like all this big news about Twilight. And <laughs> I kind of wish... I wish that how you should how it should have ended did, like, the film, where he, like, shows up in a cameo. He appears, like, in a photo, which is, like, really weird. It's like a moving picture. Like, all the pictures in Harry Potter move. <clears throat> And I just wish he would just win like, hey, y'all, I'm going to be in this.